Roku just one year ago was $350 per share. It is currently sitting at $71 per share with a low of 62 for the year. Now, the reason this is important is I'm quite sure that if you went back a year and you had looked at Roku, you'd have thought, God, there's no way it's going to fall 80% in one year. And that's what happens with overvaluation. That's what happens with any stock that Kathy Wood touches. She touches something. It's the kiss of death. It goes down a lot. This is one of her biggest holdings. Actually, it might be her biggest holding currently in her fund. At one point, it was her largest holding. So we're going to look at Roku. Mo and I were both value investors. I've been teaching value investing for the last 10 years and the last few years on YouTube. But just because I have a YouTube channel or just because anyone has a YouTube channel does not make them an expert. But I guarantee that if you watch this video and four or five other videos, you will walk away saying, this guy has a process and he makes sense. You may not agree with everything I say, which is fine and expected, but there's a rationality here. I look at every investment as the present value of all future cash flow. So let's look at Roku. This is our software and this is the stock. Go ahead, Mo. It makes up, it's the third largest holding and makes up about 7.8% of her overall so investment. since it's down 80%, I'm quite sure she's added a lot in the last year to the Roku position. She has. She's been in and out of it, but her last position, I believe, was a big ad. Okay. What is ARC currently trading at? Which, by the way, she stopped posting her returns on the main page, but it's currently at $42 yep. per share. Yep. Okay. That's pretty interesting. Off of a 150 high. Awesome. One, 160. 160. 159 or so. Oh boy. So let's use our eight pillars to evaluate this company. Pillar number one, we want the five-year PE ratio being under 22.5. Here is the five-year PE. NA. That means they have not made money over the last five years overall. Okay. Pillar number two, we want the five-year return on invested capital being greater than 9%. We go right over here. 0.7%. Their average of the last five years is $24 million in free cash flow per year. Now, this may be okay. This company is growing. They're going to spend a lot of money to grow. And in that case, it's going to be reflected on these balance sheet, on the income statement and the balance sheet. And these are the things that to consider when you look at companies that are growing. You cannot value this the same way as Microsoft. And I fully understand that. Pillar number three, we want revenue growth over the last five years. So we go to the income statement and this is the revenue growth of the last five years. 600 million to 3 billion, massive check. So as you can tell, big time growth. But guys, remember, This growth does not necessarily lead to stock price going up. If you overpay for a company, even if they hit all these parameters and grow like crazy, they'll still decline. Look at Intel, Cisco, Micron, all these companies back in 2000. They're currently selling for prices lower than they were 22 years ago, even though the businesses are two, three, four, or greater times larger. So just remember that if you overpay, it won't matter even if the company grows more and more and more. Pillar number four, very simple. We want net income growth. So we go back five years ago, they lost 45 million. Last year, they lost 46 million. So it's a slight X, slightly X. And I will say it took people staying home. You see the big $230 million positive number. It took people staying home and using this thing religiously to make money. Yep. An anomaly situation. Now, pillar number five is the silent killer for investments. And this especially happens with companies that have a lot of growth potential. There are two ways to raise money, through debt and through equity. When you raise money through equity, you issue shares as a publicly traded company. Well, when you're issuing shares, you're diluting the owners of the company. So we want to see the share count either staying the same or going down. Now, for overpriced companies, I don't blame them for issuing shares. Look at a company like Square. They made a $30 billion acquisition in the last year or so, and they used all stock. I don't blame them at all. Why? Their stock was insanely overpriced. Use the stock, use the shares. I'm fine with that. So in order to see this, we scroll all the way to the bottom and they had 95 million shares at the end of six years. And now they have 135 million shares. Massive X. They have diluted the crap out of investors. So what that means is if a company issues 50% more shares, but they've grown 50%, you've seen no gains as a user. Because now you're splitting as a stockholder. Now you're splitting those revenue and profit and cash flow and balance sheet and everything amongst 50% more people. So you've seen no growth when the company grows 50%. Okay, now granted, this company has grown more than that, which is good. Now, pillar number six has to do with debt. Now, again, I want to sit there and say, what's a reasonable amount of debt? And through my analysis, I've determined for me that I take the five-year average free cash flow and I multiply it by five. So 24 million times five is $120 million. I want their long-term liabilities under 120 million. Now keep in mind, as we said earlier, this free cash flow number is probably 
on the low side because they're spending so much money growing, right? So let's go to the balance sheet, scroll all the way to the bottom, long-term liabilities, $693 million. So it's well over the 120. But again, it's not as concerning for me because they're still a growing company, right? Okay. Pillars seven and eight have to do with free cash flow. Now, free cash flow is cash from operations, less your capital expenditures. And there are five things you can do with free cash flow. Buy back shares, pay down debt, pay dividends, reinvest back in yourself and make acquisitions. You can do any five. You can do one of each. You can do all you can do three of them, any combination you want. But this is the lifeblood of the business. And in our software, we have added this free cash flow line to make the math easy for you. So five years ago, they lost 18 million in free cash flow. Last year, they lost 5 million. Check mark there. So there is some cash flow growth. Less losses is growth. And finally, for our valuation metric, just like the PE, five-year PE, we want below 22.5. We take the five-year average free cash flow and we work backwards. We multiply this by 22.5 to give us a market cap of the company we want to focus on. So 24 million times 20 is 480 plus 50 is 530 plus another half is $540 million. So we want a we want a market cap of $540 million. I'm going to guarantee you right now that's not the case here. 10 billion. 10 billion. So here's our eight pillars. This does all the math for you. There's a lot of red here, guys. But again, I can't stress this enough. If the company can continue to grow, they can grow into the value. If they're close to free cash flow, they can grow into that value. So you have to sit here and use our stock analyzer tool. Now, there are some things I want to show you that are very beneficial in the company. So this is Roku's recent data change. Year-over-year growth in active accounts, 14%. Year-over-year growth in streaming hours, 19%. With a decline, though, in the last quarter. And then average revenue per user, this is what I like seeing, 21% increase. Steadily increasing every single quarter. So there are some major... That is a good thing. Now, the question is, can they compete with the Apple TVs? That's the big... Mo, I know you're going to talk about that. Yeah, that's the thing. I I mean, you think about all the platforms out there. Amazon has their Fire Stick. Which is garbage, by the way. It is garbage. But Apple TV, which is not garbage. Chromecast. It's, it's cheap. I mean, it's so there is a lot of competition out there. That's the thing. It's interesting though, because I, I think this is the best one. I like this more than Apple TV. Really? I use it more than Apple TV and I'm the biggest Apple fanboy out there. I think Roku is an awesome platform. I just don't think that the value meets product and, and but the numbers So when you good. say it's an awesome platform, what do you mean by that? Like, why do you Much like more, more about it? more simple to use. Really? I thought, I, I think the Apple TV is really simple to use too. It is, but I just, I, for some reason, I think it's easier to use. I have uh, four or five of them in the house. I use them everywhere. You don't even use the Apple TV in the house? Mm -mm. You sociopath. I know. I love Roku. Okay. I just love Roku. So from this perspective, now we have to sit there and determine, oh, let's look at analyst estimates right now. Yeah, I'm actually pretty surprised by these. So go ahead and go through it, Mo. So the the earnings per share kind of all over the map, right? I mean, you're seeing negative growth in this year, and then you're seeing big negative growth on earnings per share into December of 26, but their revenue growth, I mean, they're expecting over 20% revenue growth in five years from now, which is great. And I can, I can see that happening. But the problem is, is even with that 20% growth on that end, I just think that might be a little bit rich for all of the competition that we need to factor in here. And that's my biggest thing. I think that the factor of, look, you have Apple TV and, and if you have an Apple product, you're more likely than not going to use Apple TV just because it's so easy to just sync together, yeah. right? That's the thing, that's the disconnect. It, it breaks up that ecosystem. So I think a lot of Apple users do go- But what's to, amazing to me is you still chose to break up your I ecosystem, even though I literally you are in love with Apple. I know, it's weird. I, don't you go to um, Steve Jobs' grave every year and cry and- uh, Three times and a year. Three times a year. Okay. I'm going next week. <laughs> So there is revenue increasing. There is still going to be a loss. So guys, they're fun. They're doing these losses along the way. That's that costs money. That's going to be dilution. Yeah. They're going to issue more and more shares and dilute their owners. So I, the other thing is our stock analyzer tool. So our stock analyzer tool is very, very useful for companies that have either a path to profitability or have already shown profit. That's the issue here. So I'm going to still put our use our stock analyzer tool to, to look at what kind of price we can pay. I'm going to make some assumptions here based on profitability today, but I will explain after the stock analyzer tool what these numbers mean. So first off, I'm doing a 10-year analysis. I think Roku is the kind of company that if the stock gets cheap enough, it will be acquired. And it's funny. There was a Yahoo story out there that there was whisperings of some type of acquisition. No names were put out there. 
but there are whisperings out there. Maybe Roku is just saying that to get some excitement going. So. so let's go with revenue growth. What was their revenue growth numbers on our um, on our um, analyst estimates? So 22 per, 22 and a half percent on the high side. Well, no, that's for the next for five, five years. years. Five years. So, so overall, I mean, they're doing looking, mid double digits or pretty close to 20 percent. So I'm going to go 20 percent. I'm going to go 15. And I'm going to go 10 on the low side. Even at 10 years, you're going 20 percent. Oh, shoot. You're right. Yeah. Sorry. 15. <laughs> let's go 12 and let's go nine. Now, profit margin. Guys, they haven't had profit margin. What's their gross margin, Mo? Can you go back to the main metrics sure. page? Gross margin... 48.1%. Okay. So let's say their profit margin on the high side would be 25%. High, you know, I can't even do that though, because they're going to have losses along the way. So I'm going to go with 20, 15, and 10. Now remember guys, this is still a big assumption because we have not seen profit yet. So this assumes day one, they have 10% profit margin when all analysts are expecting losses for the next five years. So this is really a difficult company to value from that perspective. For free cash flow, I'm going to do the exact same thing because over long periods of time, free cash flow and profit margin should be the same. Now for PE, 13, 16, 19, 13, 16, 19. And the reason being here is the average stock is 15 times earnings. I don't know. This is a very confusing one. <laughs> All confusing I know is it's speculative. for my desired return, I'm going to go big. I'm going to go 15, 18, no, 15, 20, and 25%. Wow. I usually do 12 and a half, 15, 17. But here, guys, I don't, these numbers are all like guesses and we don't know this profit is going to happen. So I need major, major margin to be right. So I'm going to hit the analyze button. It's at $72 right now. Even if it's all green. There's a lot of unanswered questions. For me personally, the answer to this question is it's too difficult. I'm going to wait till they're profitable. So let's click the analyze button. And even making these really high assumptions, guys, we're at a low price of 33, a high price of 65, and a middle price of 50. Now, does this mean when it drops seven more dollars, look at it? Again, guys, that assumes major profitability. And that major profitability is nowhere close to happening. For a company like this, unless it falls to me below 25 or 30 bucks, and we understand what the company is doing for profitability, I just can't entertain buying it. Yeah. Even if the company was at even if the company was at twenty five dollars right now and we were still seeing the same numbers out of the financials, it's still you don't know because they're gonna dilute the heck out of owners. Yeah. Guys, we didn't even scratch the surface yet on the eight pillars because of the way this company's structured. So you really need to watch this next video on our eight pillar process and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for your time.